cruise control. You know wow. And uh, I got this record. I'm gonna let y'all. It just got the paperwork done, right? Yes. You just got the got the paperwork done. You know what I'm saying? So it looks like the official single is about to be this record called Deja Vu, featuring my boy Ricky Rose. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Real okay. fly. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. trust me when I say. They got this loop in there. You know what I'm saying? It's real hypnotizing. I know it's real. Cause when I, I went to the strip club, I'm a, I'm yeah, yeah, come, yeah, on come on with it, come on with it. I went to the strip club, you know what I'm saying? We thought we break, you know what I'm saying? We break the records there in the strip club. I'm in Magic City, you know what I'm saying? My boys, you know what I'm saying? They went to the DJ. You know, DJs make a real lot. You know what I'm saying? I, I went there and gave it to the DJ, and DJ was like, I'm gonna show you some love, I'm just gonna pop it in. They just got through playing, you know what I'm saying, the uh, Big Meech Larry Hoover joint, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So then right after that, it was crazy, they put my joint in there, you hear that, that sample. And then you know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Rick Rose came in and said, Let me holler at him, Slim. Oh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then he come in, and then I dropped my joint in there. What? <laughs> <laughs> yo, man, the crowd, yo, they went ham. I'm going to tell you right now, I mean, I stayed in the platinum room so long, man. <laughs> <laughs> you doing that joint tonight? Oh man, you know what? No, I'm, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't yeah, know. I catch a strip. Okay, okay. But that's lucky in the back, you know what I'm saying? For sure, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's like the DJ, like, whatever he, whatever he's feeling, you know what I'm saying? But I I know I gotta let Milwaukee hit. We're gonna give him a take. We're gonna give him a take. Yeah. So, y'all gotta come out there tonight, you know what I'm saying? Y'all hear this new official joint, trust me. It feels real good, man. Like, <laughs> man, that's right. it feels real good. So, I'm like, I'm real, I'm excited for the summer. That's what it is. What, what made you want to start getting down with the music and all that? What was your inspiration behind, you know what I mean, becoming an artist? Oh, man. Well, um, well, it's, I've been doing this for a long time, but um, I started off in the church. You know, my, my mom's an evangelist, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is okay. crazy. So I was in the church all the time, you know. So I sang in, I sang in the choir. I wasn't in the chorus or anything like that in school or whatever. But I, I always knew that I had, like, a, a love for music or whatever. So um, it's real crazy, you know. Like, my voice is not the traditional voice, you know what I'm saying? Like, even when I, when I start getting older, my voice start getting, like, silky-like, so. You know, usually traditional artists, you know, they're, they're singers, when they're singing, they're like, hey, man, woo! You know, they feel the spirit. And I start singing, it's like, what? Oh, hey, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, mom, my, mom didn't, my mom wasn't too particular about that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, the one time, so one time she came to me and she was like, um, I need you to listen to this. I'm like, okay. I got to go to the table. I'm like, take the Bible. Baby face? Mama, this ain't gospel. <laughs> <laughs> I know, baby. I know, baby. baby. You sound, you really sound just like him. So I started listening to Baby Face and DeBarge, the Elder Barge. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it started from there. And you know, and the rest is history. <laughs> That's what it is. How long have you been doing your thing with the music and all that? Man, well, officially, well, 112 came out in 96, so 96, it's like 15 freaking years. Yeah. I was really 15, 16 years old. Man, now, you know, I'm feeling like I'm a grown man right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, but, you know, I've been doing my thing, so I, I guess I'm, like, I'm, I can be in my 30s, and, and they hear people be like, legend, I'm like, no, I'm not a legend. Like, no, no, like, Ashley Brothers, Legend. Like we went on tour. We went on tour. Then we understood what that was. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you know, I'm still working at it. And thank God I started off early. So hopefully I could be just like him, be in the game 40, 50 years. You know what I'm saying? Still being able to do the thing. You know what I mean? Fans still love me already. You know what I mean? How does it feel to be to, to still get the love after you know what I mean? Knowing that you've been doing it for like 15 plus. Now that's wild. Now that that's wild. You know what I mean? And you know, that's why it felt so good when I dropped so fly. And, uh, yeah. So yeah, people were saying that was that was wild right there. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it was a it was a situation where I kind of reinvented myself. Right. So it was wild because you know if you look at the 15 years, you would think that oh, all your fans are gonna be older or whatever. Oh no, man! I was like doing shows with like this, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like I was right. still doing shows with everybody. Like and the fans are still young. And you know what I'm saying? So. Now it's like real funny, like when I did my, I was trying to do my uh, deal, do my uh, new deal here, they straight told me, like the last time, you're not a duck contemporary, but I'm sorry, we, like, you gotta come out just like, you know what I mean, and you still gotta pop, just like Chris Brown, just like, uh, you know what I'm saying, Trey Songz, so that's the, that's the type of 
producers I'm still working with, so I still work with the Bangladeshis and the drummer boys, you know what I'm saying? And then also I had to keep it, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm walking both sides, so I still work with the Tim and Bobs, and you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So you're going to get the best of both worlds, you know what I'm saying? It's like a blueprint of how album, R&B albums are supposed to be like, wow! You know what I mean? Already, already. That's what it is. Where did the motivation come to still come up with these bangers that you make, you know what I mean? Man, was everyday life, you know what I mean, like, what we go through, and I'm going to tell you, it was funny, it's like, everybody come up to me and they think of R&B music, and they look at me and they say, man, even when you think of 112, they would be like, man, you do the records for the girls, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, we do, but check it out, I really do it for the players. Right, right. Players like me, we don't like to talk too much, you right. know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like, <laughs> if it's a situation, you know what I'm saying, I, you, you already know what I'm talking about. Like, you just not came from the joint. You know what I'm saying? I've been in the club. I don't, I listen to Weezy. I don't listen to. I listen to everybody. You know what I'm saying? I don't pull this. I don't pull this bad girl. I, I don't went hard. I, I, man, you know what I mean? Like, I don't work hard for this ride. You know what I'm saying? It's nice and shiny. I got my joint on. You know what I'm saying? Feeling myself. I got this girl. I got her to the car. Like, I don't too much want to do too much talking. So I could just stick this slim C joint. On. That's the reason why it's called Cruise Control. I promise you. Let the music do the talking. It's like you looking at her like she looking back at her, you like she's so crazy. <laughs> she giving you that look like it's, it's going down. You know what I'm saying? Already. You can thank me now. You know what I'm saying? Don't even thank me later. Thank me now. And trust me, that's what it's that's what it's about. Thank you. Know you. I'm um not curious to know, but I noticed when you first start speaking. You was a little reluctant to release your new single because you said a copyright, basically, right? Well, yeah. Well, because you know how it, it's just like well, once the paperwork and stuff, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And then um, once you got to get the paperwork done first, and then you know, I've been like showing off the record without it being mixed and mastered and stuff like that. So now that I when when I did it on the uh, independent side, now I'm a young CEO, so I know exactly like the. I have to say the politics of the situation. Right, so right. a lot of times, you know, us being artists, we're so happy go lucky we just wanna just play the record. We don't understand sometimes that maybe now it's not the time. Uh, you know really? what I'm saying? It just you know, things just have to you know what I mean, just in the right place at the right time and stuff like that. And then Pushy, I know you probably got a new hot banger and there's so many mixtapes be coming out oh. so fast you drop your single. And, and, and that's how I'm gonna tell you right. <laughs> <laughs> For real. But you know what though, but I, I'm gonna let you know I'm, I'm I look at it like this too, and because you know what's going on right now, you got the internet, obsession and stuff like that. A lot of those mixtapes I love because mm -hmm. I look at it as this is the best possible type of promotion you could possibly ever get. Right. And word to Weezy, okay? <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure before you know what I'm saying when everybody was doing all his joints or whatever before he was probably thinking like, yo, I'm on so many mixtapes or whatever, man, they're not gonna get my album. But then after that million, that million records were sold, after that first week, you have to go and have to thank all of the, you know what I'm saying, the mixtape and the DJs for show, actually showing them that love, you know what I'm saying? Because it's artists that wish to God we could be on a mix, that's real, you know what I'm saying? So, but you know, I mean, it's, it's like a little bit of both, you know what I'm saying? You don't want your stuff to leak out too fast, or where they'll be like, it's a brand new record, but it's old to everybody in the street. Mm -hmm. But, you know what I mean, at the same time, you know, I mean, I'm not mad at the mixtape because, you know what I mean, I'm sure that's how I get how these streets, that's how I get my money, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to ask someone one more question, okay? Like, um, nowadays, we, we see a lot of bootleg stuff, yeah. and I, I wonder, how does that affect an artist with their skills mm. opposed to back when you say you was like 15 years old doing this, yeah. and y'all group was kind of like one of y'all favorite songs of mine, just smile, oh, wow. you know, so... Uh, that's not even a single. You a real fan. That's all right. Wow, I'm loving that. <laughs> so, you know, seriously, back then you, you had to get, you had to know the artist, so you had to go buy it. That's there true. Wasn't no download. There was no that. downloading. So, there was no nothing. And you know, so much has changed now. You know, and, you know. So that's why I, you know I kind of chose to do it on the uh, on the independent side because now, see, back then, like once where we sold twenty three million. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the hottest wreck, the hottest. Hot, hottest uh, artist to this day probably won't sell that. Right. They won't even think to even want to know how that feels. But right, right. at the time, you know what I'm saying? That's when the, when the when the labels were actually making money. 
the labels were making more money than the artists right. anyway, you know what I'm saying? So what I decided to do was I wasn't going to let this business play me. I'm going to play this business. Mm -hmm. If I've been in the game for this long, you know what I mean? So I still feel like I'm still young and fresh and fly. <laughs> I'm going to take my shot, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's what I did, okay. So, all right, we do have the, um, we might have the bootleg and we might have it, okay. Cool. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that on for my advantage, mm -hmm. and you know what I mean, and then my whole campaign is like, I go right at, I go right after the DJs, and right after, you know what I mean, and then once you drop your stuff, okay, I know I don't have the money like a big time major joint to put, print out four million copies, right. but if I, if I get out here and just look at my situation right here, I mean, I, I printed up 300,000 copies, mm -hmm. and 250,000 got sold, at the end of the day, yeah. I eat better than I any mean, any well, artist, already. you know what I'm saying, on the major. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you make seven dollars off it? Mm -hmm. So I ain't mad, you know what I'm saying? Already. You know what I'm saying? So it's a blessing. I, I look at it as a blessing. I just look I just when I look at an artist, anybody out there that's trying to do that thing or whatever, learn the business. This is a business. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? It's cool to have the fame and the hype and all that stuff, but once that <coughs> fades away, trust me. It's just like anybody else that puts their pants on like anybody else. You're trying to pay your bills. And then, you know, we don't have a social security uh, situation. You know what I mean? We have to set up our own IRA accounts or whatever. So you got to think about it like that. You know what I'm saying? You got to think towards your future. How am I about to make this money stretch for 20 years? You know what I'm saying? Trust me. Anybody there looking at Weezy and all the mugs and cats out there buying Bugattis and all that stuff, let me give y'all a word of advice. He came out before I did. So he's already smart. He thought about that. The right. money he's spending is the money back then. The right. money he's not is it ain't the money what he's making right now. You see what I'm saying? Right. And he's smart. Trust me, baby and all the must they 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 thinking they making sure he will not go broke. It's no way. You tickle me. Because you look young with you. He like a little old song. Cause but you that's what I'm saying. You call them mugs. Yeah, but you know, I'm from the ATL, you know what I yeah. mean? It don't come out sometimes, you know what I mean? When I say mug, you know what I mean? That's I what I like that, though, that was too weak. But, you know, it's real, you know what I mean? And, you know what I mean? I just, I just want anybody and everybody out there to know, like, just don't look at just the videos and what you think, you know what I'm saying, what we allow y'all to see. You know what I'm saying? Because the image is one thing. Right. Reality is a whole Already. other situation. Now, so I can kind of a little recap what you said. You, 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 you did your CD and you print, printed up 300 copies. Just so the listeners are clear and I'm clear myself. Mm -hmm. So you, you take that and you do that in-house distribution or do you go like a major distribution and pay them a percentage and then you pocket the $7? Now see, what I did was I went to a, uh, I, I went to Asylum. Asylum is uh, basically, was basically straight distribution. Now they, I, I mean, I really appreciate them at the end of the day because they took their shot at me. I'm the first R&B artist that they uh, they ever done done. So that was some history yeah, going right there. And I'm probably the most successful mm -hmm. independent R&B artist probably easily. Because at the end of the day, they made eight figures off me. And I, you know what I mean? Yeah. I made my, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I made my, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I love. How was it working with Biggie and all that? Man, one of the greatest rappers, you know what I mean, to ever do it. Man, it's a blessing, man. You know, he was like a big brother to us. Like, like I said, I'm, uh, I'm from ATL. All of 112 were from straight from ATL. So we had to move to ATL and, you know what I'm saying, go to New York. And that was like a real, it was like a kind of a culture shock, a music shock, everything. Because, you know, in ATL at the time, you know, hip-hop wasn't prevalent like how it is now. You know, the South, we were, we were going wild, wild right now. But back then, we, we, we might have had out there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and but, but that's about it, you know what I'm saying? So we knew the R&B side. Of course, we all grew up in the church. And now we had to come up there and actually learn, okay, different types of beats and that whole mm -hmm. East Coast hip hop thing. And I go front, you know, uh, the, the first people that embraced us and took us in was D.I.G. and Faith. They were married at the time, you know what I'm saying? Wow. So we were blessed to actually hang out with them all the time, like even on the block, you know what I'm saying? He was in Frownstone, kicking it with Faith at the church, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, whatever. And, man, we probably got some lessons directly, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's one thing, like, go to school, 
and go to something and it but it, and it's a one it's a whole nother thing to have a hands-on type of situation yeah. and what we had was our hands-on experience like I, I never forget we went with a show the biggie in philadelphia and i never forget at the time you know it was something like he just saw with me he kept saying and, and you know nobody was saying who was the leader of anything or whatever you just saw four dudes right. but he just liked how i was rock my right. swag was right. whatever yeah. so he was like hey slim you paying attention this is how you do it now he he got his back he's talking to us he, he talks to me then he turns around and walks right on the stage so how i'm looking at him is his back to his back to me and you see the reaction of the crowd going right, ham. Right, right. And how he turned it on, and you know what I'm saying? And then like when he turned it back off, and you know what I'm saying, it's just like, boom, now I'm back to Christopher Wallace. Right. right. And you saw the two things, and it's like one thing you saw how you control the crowd and how to be a, an incredible artist, but it was another thing to see the man after uh, when you're off the stage, what really made the whole notorious B.I.G., the whole Biggie Smalls character even that much more bigger. He was a cool dude. He was a real cool ass dude. Like, man, when I call him. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> big and all. Okay, okay. I'm here. I'm here. But he was, he was real cool, though. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, he was real cool. You know what I'm saying? He was real cool. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it was one of them situations, like, you know what I mean? Like, he was just like, he'll give you the shirt off his back. Like, if you ask for it, like, you know what I'm saying? He was a real nice dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was real cool. Like, he was just about his business. You know what I'm saying? Oh, really? So, you know, that's yeah. how, um, so, yeah. how was the uh, whole bad boy experience? You know, at the time when you was with bad boy, they was, um, they was controlling the game. Yeah, it was know? an era. And it was, a, it was an era. It was a situation where, you know, it just, it's a blessing to just be involved with that whole situation and just, man, it was crazy, like, to know, like, you ran a, the billboards to know that you were always in the top five for a year and a half in a row like and straight you know you ran it that's crazy you know oh, what i mean really? and you know and to see how you impact people's lives and stuff like that you know you know so and and it also made us look at ourselves like we are role models whether you like it or not mm -hmm. so good or bad they're gonna pick it up right. so if you say one thing and it might come off the wrong way you be like oh, I might have, you know what I'm saying? like and then you started this situation oh, and then when you have the good side, where you know, when you affect, and then now uh, people come in and be like, oh, you want to do the song? You don't know how much it affected you. That's what it is. That's what it is. Y'all make sure y'all stay tuned in. We got more with the S, the L, the I, the M. Yeah, man. We're about to jump into the jams. 102.5 FM, Swiss Money Live. Don't forget the ENT. Tell your daddy to pay you. <laughs> <laughs>